In this video, I'm going to show you how we catch kingfish. We're going out on my buddy Ryan's 28 foot fountain with twin mercuries. They seem to be running, so it should be a good day. We also got our friend Connor and David with us. And I don't know if you recognize this spot, but this is Tavernier Creek. And today we're going to be heading offshore from Tavernier, which is just south of Key Largo. We're going to head out to the reef's edge and troll between 120 to 180 feet of water. But first, we're gonna stop at the Tavernier Creek Marina, get some food, get some ice, get a couple drinks, and then it's time to head offshore. Get him in the intro. <laughs> All right. I don't know, your camera might break. All right, we're at the old stomping grounds, Tavernier Creek Marina. Where's the sign? It's back there. You know, we tried and to get out there before the sunset, but this lazy bastard <laughs> right here, sleeping on the job. Nice, someone's got to take a nap every once in a while, right? We're out here today with freaking, on Ryan's boat. What is this, a 26, 28 fountain? Yeah, finally got it all fixed up and ready to go. We got the whole crew today. You got any words of hope? Uh, words of hope. <laughs> Put me on the spot. Get us on them. Yeah, I hope it's we catch a wahoo. <laughs> Let's just get out there, get the baits rigged up. We'll drop them in and it's fishing time. Ah, uh, there's Tavernier Creek Bridge. I lived in Tavernier for a little over two years. I've gone under this bridge hundreds of times on my boat. And there's just a special feeling it gives me. By the way, keep this in mind. We just left a gas station, but we didn't get any gas. You'll see what happens later. Before we get offshore and start trolling for Kingfish and Wahoo, I wanna give a big thank you to this video's sponsor, Truebill, which is an all-in-one personal finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. This personal finance manager allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, monitor your credit score, and build your savings all in one place. And these are my favorite parts about it. First of all, you see all of your subscriptions. Turns out I was subscribed to five video streaming apps. Freaking five! And I only use two of them. So canceling those already saved me over $30 a month. That's a lot of fishing gear at the end of the year. Truebill can also lower your bills. Simply by uploading a photo and tapping a button, Truebill can negotiate your bills for you from internet service bills to cell phone and cable bills. You can also set up budgets that automatically monitor your spending by category and it'll give you a friendly notification when you've exceeded that spending. You've bought too many fishing rigs, you better cut that shit out. Truebill will also monitor your credit score with complete access to your credit reports and history. And you'll be alerted of important changes that impact your credit score and offers you insights on ways to improve it. You're gonna need a good credit score to buy that 78 foot Viking sport fisher. If you're like me and you wanna save more money so you can do more fishing, you can try Truebill for free at Truebill bill.com forward slash fishing figure out where your money is going cancel your subscriptions that you don't need financially plan your future and pave your way to success because when your finances are in line your mind is at ease and you can focus on where the fish are and right now we're gonna look for that kingfish let's get back to fishing we made it out to a depth of 120 feet and it's time to start trolling. We're going to be using these wire double hook pre-rig ballyhoo. It's a bit of a wavy day. I had a bad audio because I was using an old GoPro because you know me, I break all my GoPros. So I'm gonna just explain the setup that we use for Kingfish right here in the comforts of my home. So we're using planers and pre-rig ballyhoo and some kind of skirt of your choice. Planers are extremely simple to use. Let me take the leader off. I think I got about 50 feet a leader on here. So you have your reel. This is a 50 wide. You can use a 30 wide for this. You could even use something smaller, but then you might be asking for trouble. This is straight mono on here, going straight to a snap swivel. That's the snap swivel going to our 50 wide. And I actually recommend putting a bigger snap swivel on there. That's just what I have on it right now. This is your planer. Take your snap swivel and put it onto this ring that comes with it. Just like that, snap it right on. Now the way a planer works is when you drop this into the water, it's gonna go up here. So this line is attached to your rod and it's gonna pull from the boat like this, causing an angle on your planer, causing the planer to go down. This planer I think goes like, I don't know, 15 or 20 feet. 
Now at the back of the planer, you got another swivel that attaches into this hole with about 50 feet of leader. And that goes all the way down to another snap swivel, which attaches directly to your pre-rigged ballyhoo. So the concept here and the way this works is you're trolling along five to nine miles an hour. If you go any faster, it'll cause your planer to pop up. Your boat will be pulling like this. Your planer will go dive down. And then if a fish bites on this and pulls on this end, what'll happen is, so you're trolling like this, planer's going down, planer's going down, you get a bite, planer straightens out and shoots to the surface. And you know you have a fish because you'll see your planer slapping around at the surface or you'll see the fish at the surface instead of your line going down because your planer is diving. You'll see me deploy it in a second. Pre-rig ballyhoo or rig them yourself, whatever is easiest. But when you take them out of the package, you got this long wire and I highly recommend putting some kind of skirt over your ballyhoo. In the video, you're about to see that we use a weighted duster feather on ours. When you take your ballyhoo out of the package, the loop is kind of big. So some of your skirts won't fit over that loop when you try to put them on. Um, something bigger like this, this will slide on just fine. See, that'll, that'll slide on no problem because it's big. But if you got something small like a duster, there's two things you can do. The first thing is you can pinch the loop. You can pinch the loop and kind of flatten it out to make it skinnier, which will let you pull your duster off. Or you can just cut the loop off, take your duster off, retie a new loop into the wire. That's up to you, however you want to do it. The line from your fishing pole to a snap swivel, going to the loop on your planer. Snap swivel at the back of the planer, going to 50 feet of whatever pound test leader, 60 or 80. At the end of that 50 feet, another snap swivel that just clips onto whatever bait you plan on trolling. Easy peasy, let's get back to the video. All right. Like, uh, all right. I toss out the rig ballyhoo with a weighted feather duster on it. Let out the 50 feet of leader and you can see the planer dangling at the tip of the rod there that the leader's connected to and I will just let it go out, feed it some line. And sometimes you'll run into an issue where your planer doesn't properly catch and want to dive down. So in that case, I just crank it up a little bit and then I try to drop it again. And then boom, you can see the planer caught. It's pulling hard, it's trying to dive down. So let your line out and we're gonna troll this maybe a half a football field behind the boat. Remember, the point of a planer is to keep your bait 10 to 20 to 30 feet below the surface of the water because sometimes the kingfish, for some reason, they just prefer to hit bait swimming a little bit deeper. Hell yeah, boy. I saw the planer bouncing around at the top of the water, so I figured there might be a fish on here, so I started reeling the sucker on in. Yeah, fish on, fish on. You wanna pull them on in? Oh yeah, a little king. This planer wasn't catching and going down, so a little trick that I have, give some hard tugs on the line. Bam! And that planer will catch and go straight down, and you'll see it crank out like this. That's how you know the tension is good and the planer is diving.
Is that a fish on? Yep. You want me to slow it down just a touch? Fish on, fish on. I see color back there. Here, I'll put this into this rod. You want to flick them in or gaff them? All right. The seas were a little rough and knocking us all over the place. So we got fish in the box and decided to call it a day and head back to port. But before we go clean the kingfish and throw it on the grill, we have to have a little bit of engine issues. He's trying harder. 36 that. gallons, what it's saying. That gauge could be off the wall, you know. It could be. Turns out the fuel gauge was telling us there was 36 gallons of fuel left in the boat when really there was nothing. <laughs> Luckily, we were almost. All the way back to land, we were on the reefs in shallow water, and it didn't take long for a tow boat to come and bring us some extra fuel. I'll take a good old German beer. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Low fuel. How low can you go? Hey, at least you gave your fuel yeah, tank I'm a glad good flush. I know now. <laughs> Everything yeah, bad in that tank was just sucked out. <laughs> And put in probably into your water separator, hopefully. They're my injectors. Yeehaw! Dude, that was the best outcome that could have happened. <laughs> Time to get back to Ryan's house, fillet the kingfish, and cook it up. Uh, what knife you want me to use? That one on the table right there? We're gonna be doing this a little different than what I normally do. We're not smoking this kingfish. We're gonna stake it up and we're gonna throw the steaks on the grill. And spoiler alert, this is amazing. The first thing that I do is I cut a slit open to get to all the organs. I pull all the organs out, make sure the kingfish is nice and clean. Then I'm gonna cut the head off of it. And then we're gonna cut this guy into about an inch and a half thick steaks. If you know me, you know I always smoke my kingfish. It's my favorite way to eat it, smoked fish dip. But I gotta say, after trying it like this, from now on, I will always, always, and always cut off a couple nice steaks off of every kingfish I catch, just to grill up that day or the next day. The rest I'll smoke, but it's just amazing. I would give up a grouper filet any day for a kingfish steak, believe it. Lather them in butter, cook them really hot so they like fry up on the edges. I'll put them up here so they don't start burning and like sticking to the grill as I get them ready. Once Ryan lathered the kingfish in some butter, he throws on some onion powder and then a blend of pepper and salt. And I'm a firm believer in the more, the merrier. Woo! Once the steaks are nicely seasoned up, it's time to put them on the hot part of the grill. Ooh, it's already got the burn marks. Oh, snap, that's looking good. Sizzle me timbers, baby. You don't wanna overcook them. You know, just cook them a little bit cook them on the outside. I mean, you don't want them to be totally raw on the inside, but a little raw is all right. As they're cooking, keep reapplying some more melted butter, and this is going to give it that extra crispy crispness. And the final product is going to be a crispy outside, a tender, juicy inside, and some of the best stuff you've ever had. 
You're going to have to take my word for it. Wait a second. You don't have to take my word for it. You just watched the tutorial on how to catch kingfish. Go out there, catch yourself a kingfish, because I'm going to tell you right now, it's kind of hard to have a day better where you go out with a group of friends, catch the fish you're targeting, come home to cook it up, have a couple beers, and just have a good freaking time. Thanks so much for watching this video to the end. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Let me know what you want to see in the future. Maybe there a specific fish you'd like to target let me know in the comments below and until next time cheers